morning and welcome to the Campbell Deck Project. It is November 7th, 2020. We last updated you on September 30th. Uh, to, another way to date this video would be to say that it's been four days since the presidential election and we're still waiting on the results. But anyhow, back to the deck. Since we last talked, we've done some planing, bracing, taping, lighting, and we've started the decking. So uh, let's start with the, the planing. So it turns out that our joists were all not completely lined up as far as the top sitting level. And we didn't want to have a roller coaster of uh, deck boards. So went out and bought a cheap planer, did a bunch of planing, and they had a couple joists that were too low. So you can see over here uh, where these joists here are doubled up. The original joist was too low, so we had to bring the level up in a few places, just, just in a couple joists here. So that was kind of a pain, but I felt like it was necessary to kind of get things right in the easiest way to fix the problem. Uh, also, you'll note that all of the joists have this black tape on them. That's the joist protect tape that we decided to use. That's to help prevent water infiltration into the joist over the years. Also, it gives you a better surface to walk on, non-skid surface during the construction. And I calculated we use about 1,050 feet of joist tape so far. And I'm probably gonna need a little bit more because we got a little bit more blocking to do, which I can mention later. Also, you'll note here in this area, there's a diagonal board that's a two by six running underneath the joist. We decided to add, even though we've got all of this extra blocking here, mid span of the joist, we decided to add uh, this diagonal bracing to give the deck a little bit more horizontal lateral stability. So it didn't take too long to do, and I feel like it makes it a lot stronger. So I think that was a good thing to add. Uh, the other thing that we worked on for a few days is we got this uh, wiring for the truck's lighting. So ultimately, every post will have a light in the cap. So the blue tape is just holding these bags to protect the, the leads from rain and moisture. So there's a wire going up each post. And then if we mosey on down here to the other end I can show you that we've also done some riser lighting here's kind of a mock-up of what the post light will look like so it's basically it's an led fixture inside of the trex post cap and so that'll just connect up like that to the wiring and there's a short piece of sleeve there that's kind of mocked in to show you what the bottom of the post will look like this piece here is a separate skirt that will hide the cuts on the bottom. Okay, so we're putting in 15 riser lights on the risers here later. There'll be three per step. You can see where the wiring is kind of roughed in here. So once we get the fascia board on, we'll be able to drill and install three risers in each step. That's why there's some extra blocking here in these end bays. The risers will be, the riser lights will be right in there. And then on the middle one, it'll actually go a little bit into the stringer. And then the last row will be up here on the band board of the deck. So there'll be 15 of these along with 18 of the post lights and they're all interconnected by these hubs which are just a parallel electrical connection and then you've got links of wire like this so all of the wires have a uh, female connector and the hubs have the male connection and then the fixtures like the post lights and the riser lights have a male connection as well. So they'll go right on the ends of the wires. So that covers the lights. Now we'll talk about the decking. We've actually been very lucky here in Northern Virginia for early November to have a series of really nice days. It's been around 70 degrees for three, four, five days now. We've got a couple more days of that coming. So it's been a really great time to put down decking. I was worried that we'd be getting into colder weather. The gapping requirements for the treks for the spacing of the boards changes when you go below 40 degrees. So. We've got some bonus weather here that's really helping us out a little bit since um, I'm so slow at my deck building projects. In any event, what we've done here with the decking is we started with uh, the picture frame perimeter at first. We started at the outside edge of the deck away from the house and we've got a picture frame of two boards wide that will complete a frame all the way around the deck. We'll do the part of the house last once we get our spacing from these deck boards coming across. I went out and bought some tile spacers to help with the spacing. The end-to-end -end requirement is 1 8 inch, you see there, and then any spacing to abutting to a surface is a quarter inch gap, and then it's a quarter inch gap between the boards as well. And for these boards on the edge, we were actually using the Trek square edge board here. 
so that you have a nice finished look. And we've got an overhang here of a one and a quarter. We're gonna have a fascia board here later that's a half inch thick, so we'll end up with a three quarter inch overhang. And then to attach those boards, we've gone ahead and face screwed them with this special two screw that looks like that. And I can assure you that cutting out all these notches and stuff for these boards and getting the lengths right was a very tedious process and it took multiple hours, especially for this board here is only about seven feet long, but for these longer ones that are about 19 feet long, it was quite an arduous project to get the length right and also all of the gaps right. So it would take a good while to do each board. But now that we've got at least three sides of the picture frame done, we're doing the infill. Let me step back over here. We're using the, the Trex hidden fastener. It looks like this and it's a really nifty nifty piece of work because what it does is it gives you that quarter inch gap between the boards and it just sets right in there like that and gives you your gap and so these boards are going much more quickly and I don't know if you can see if you maybe go a little bit higher on the angle you can see that they're alternating gaps like this the gap on this board is about nine feet down but then the next one is about 19 feet down and then it alternates alternating seams because all of the boards come originally 20 feet long so we're basically getting nine foot sections and 19, 19 foot sections for the, the long part of the span of course we had to do some mitering on the corners here and that was a little bit of extra work but it's coming together so we're pretty happy with it <laughs> 